All right, so today I'm going to be talking about how we can tint grayscale background images using just CSS. So here's the example. This is what we're going to be building. So I've got a sample website here with this really nice big background image, high quality uh, image. And once I've added my text here, I want to use white as my text color. And I want to use a light font weight. But the problem is, I can't read half this text based on this background. So I could go into my H1 element here and just add a, a background color around this. I could add a background color for the whole th for the whole area here. So I could add some HTML, put an extra layer in there, add a background color to that to size it specifically. But I don't want to do that. I want to just use CSS and say, okay, here's my background image. And I want to use the built-in ability of CSS to layer backgrounds. Now, when you layer backgrounds, it's actually background images that you can layer. So I can provide multiple background images and they will pile one on top of the other. Linear gradients are considered images. So we can use a linear gradient to apply something. So something like this. So we've got a linear gradient applied as a background image on top of the image that we want. And I get to choose what color I want. And the gradient can go in any direction, or it could stay the same. I could pick one color and have the same at the top and the bottom. The whole gradient is the exact same. It's just a tint color applied to the grayscale image. So we use partial alpha on this linear gradient to let the image show through. Now I don't have to touch the HTML at all. It's just two background images applied to the area where we want the tint. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, my image that I'm using, I'm getting from Lorem Pixum, great website, uh, free sort of placeholder images. And inside of here, when you're picking one of the images, you can just add grayscale. So this is the image that I'm going to use. Here's the regular one. And if I add grayscale on here, and we have to get rid of the eye in front of it, when I load it, here is the grayscale version of that. So this is the image that I'm going to use. I'm going to take a slightly smaller one. I don't want 5,000 pixels wide. So I've got a smaller version of that. I'm just providing different widths and heights to get part of this. And we're going to build this. So here's our starting point. I've got the basic nav bar. That's set up already with my colors. I've even got a hover effect right there. And in my main, there's nothing. In the header, I have my H1. So that's it. So I've already picked a font. The font that I'm using through everything is coming from CDN fonts, a great place for free web fonts that you can use in your websites. So Brandon Grotesque is the one that I'm using. So this is our starting point and I'll jump into VS Code here. You can see I'm loading my font and then using that in my style sheet, I've just applied it to everything. That's the font family that I want for absolutely everything. Um, I have a script tag in here all it's doing is toggling this class tint on the header. So if you click on the header, I'm adding and removing that class just so I can see what it looks like with and without, like I was demonstrating here. So as I click on the header, it shows it with and without. And then if I alter the size, if I move this around, you know, I get different layouts, different positioning for that. If I look at it in the mobile sense, there we are, with and without. So jump back in here. So that's what the script is doing, is just toggling that class. So let's take a look at the CSS and see what we're doing here and see what we can add to apply the tinting. All right, so the nav bar using display flex, I'm pushing it over towards the right. I'm vertically aligning everything inside the nav bar. So my little uh, pipe characters that are dividing up the links those are aligned vertically as well. Uh, current color just means I'm taking the white text color that was set in the nav bar to apply to my anchors. Uh, there's my hover effect. And here we go. So header and header tint and the H1. These are the three things that we're going to be playing with. Uh, my media query, if I'm below 600 pixels, these are the uh, changes that I'm making to the font sizes just to make everything still fit nicely. All right, in the header, First thing I want to do is I want to actually center this. So instead of it being here, I want it centered inside of my whole main or my whole header area here. 
So simplest way to do that, we just add display grid. And we will say that it's going to be place content center. One value uses both horizontally and vertically. And so it's going to move my text right to the middle of the header. And the header is set at 800 pixels tall. There we go. So this is vertically centered inside that element. Now, backgrounds. So we're going to say background image. And that's going to be my image URL. And we're going to just grab it from here. I'm going to take this one. Throw it inside of here. Now, this is the full 5,000. I uh, actually looked at the aspect ratio and reworked it to a little bit smaller. So 29, 36, and 1970 for this image. And we add grayscale to that. There we are. I saved that. That's my background image. We'll take a look. OK, there it is. So it's much bigger still than the area that we have here. I'm only getting part of this image. So two things I want to do. One is I want to shrink it down. I'm going to set my background size to cover. The keyword cover is going to shrink it down so that it covers at a minimum the uh, smallest or sorry, the largest of the two dimensions, height and width. So shrinks it down to make sure the entire background of the header is covered. And then the second part is I want to center it. I want to see the center of the image. So let's add that one first. We'll say background uh, position center. There we are. Now I'm at the middle of the image. We get to see the issue with the text here. Uh, I'm actually going to go in at this point and change the color of the text because I did want to have this as white. There we go. But we're still having the issue where it is still white on a white and black background. So it's very difficult to read that. So let's shrink this image down a little bit more. So background size is going to be set to cover. There we go. Now we've got a much better looking image. We're seeing more of the image and this does work. It does resize itself as we adjust the screen. So that's working regardless. And even on the mobile size, there we have it. Okay. Now this other class tint, the class that we're adding. Now this is where we're going to change the background image property. So the background image is no longer going to be just the URL. Now we want to put the linear gradient as well as the URL. So we'll say linear gradient. That's going to be our first image. And then the second one is going to be this URL. Inside of linear gradient, we have to provide a direction. So 180 degrees, it's going to be from top to bottom. And I'm going to set HSLA and HSLA. So there's going to be two colors. I use this one, hue, saturation, lightness, and alpha. So the hue, I'm going to use the same hue. I'll set it to 200 on both of these. So it's going to be the blue. And then saturation on this first one. Let's go with 60% saturation, 50% uh, for the lightness right in the middle. And I'm just going to start with 32% for this one. And then I'll do the same thing down here. We'll say 60%, 50%, 0.32. Now at the end, there's an optional thing here. We can say, um, well, it's better to put it in. We want to say, where does this second color point come to? This is the first one. So this is at the top. If I'm using 180 degrees, it's going to be from top to bottom. The top is zero right is 90, bottom's 180, and the left is 270 if you want it to go straight in one of those directions. This is the color stop to say, where do we want to reach this second value? So for right now, I'm just going to say 100%, meaning, okay, from top to bottom, here's the start, here's the end point. Mine are both the same, both color values are the same, but let's take a look and see what we have here. So tinting in here, uh, it's working to add the class. Oh, I forgot my comma right here. We do need a comma between the two color points. There we go. So direction, first point, 
second point and the percentage where that is. So we could continue to add points. We could put another comma and another point here. That was my screw up with, there we go. So here it is. Now it's working and we've got that color and we've just applied a tint. That's all we did. There's nothing else to it. It's the same color at the top and the bottom. We've just applied a tint. If I change the hue, if I say, let's go for 40 degrees, top and bottom, there we go. We've got something more like a sepia tint. So you can just change this color to get different values. And it doesn't have to be the same at the top and the bottom. We can say, all right, I'm going to go for less saturation and a lot less lightness here. I'm going to start with much less alpha and go for a lot more. Let's go 95%. So 16% to 95% of the color. This one's going to be uh, brighter. This one's going to be darker because the lightness is much lower value. And there you can see, you can see a lot more of the image at the top than you can at the bottom. This is filling this in. It's almost like it's blurring the image even more. If you go to 80% instead of 100%, so now it's about this point right here that we're reaching the color and it's the same from that point down. So we've blurred even more of this. And I mean, the effects that you get are really just up to your imagination, what you want to do with it. But you can apply any color tint that you want just by adding that linear gradient on top of the background. So we have those two properties in here. We've got the background image, linear gradient, and then the image. All right. So Hope that helps. Uh, if you're looking for a copy of the code, you'll find a link to the code just in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.